Disclaimer. We are two regular guys who love to talk Bone Thugs and Harmony. We do not represent Bone Thugs or any Bone affiliate. We are also not Bone Thugs experts. The views and information you hear in this podcast may be based on personal opinion. Please feel free to leave corrections and clarifying information in the comments. And enjoy. Hopefully, you know, he may find an, another generation of artists to kind of carry that into the next, you know, into the future generation, you know, or pick up where we left off. I would like to see that. Based on that way of thinking, as far as, you know, you can't be former because, you because you know, you started it up. I The wording of this is going to come across weird, but I guess what caused the departure or in this case more the distance between you and seventh sign and and ultimately we almost watched you know you just kind of fade away from the picture right well i think that there was a number of things um i think that it was a number of things i think that it was a little Obviously, you know, the accountability on my end would definitely be um, my lack of communication, right? My um, my lack of properly communicating what I expect, what I need. Um, that silence goals. you talked about. I'm sorry? That it was, it's that silence you talked about where you were kind of more listening and and not such a, a correct so that's the du- yeah right so that's the double-edged sword to that right because you know that's how you get overlooked right that's how you get forgotten about um but i think that overall i just you know i want to say timing but it's just i don't i just don't think that um after a while everybody was on the same page you know, I think that at some point we took for granted what we had. Um, I tell Busy this to this day, you know, it, to some degree, he, he may have spoiled us um, because he, he allowed us to, he allowed us to take light from his gigantic sun and bask in a little of his light, mm. right? And by him doing that, you know, that's taking a little bit from him to share with somebody else. So while we're in his light, you know, that gives us a false perception and a false reality, because at the end of the day, it's his son that we're reflected off of. We needed to learn how to navigate through the industry and create hit songs on our own. Um, that is not something that outside of a feature every now and again that he can help with. You know, so um, I just think that, I don't know. I just think that the music was there, but after a while, the togetherness wasn't. And again, I think that's to do with a lot of moving pieces um, because we definitely have potential to, especially um, me, Capo, Q Loco. For a couple years there, we was making some bangers, just us three, you know, as a seven sign. You know, we we was really, you know, we really, me, Capo, and Q Loco was really going to do it, you know. Um, and then, you know, shit happens, man. You know, life happens, you know. Um, there was a point in time where, you know, me and Capo didn't see eye to eye, you know. Um, that was a, a question I, I had that right. a fan wanted to know about, that there's a right. rumored tension between you and Capo, and that may have been one of the reasons you stepped away. Um, I don't think that was the reason I stepped away. I think that was the impetum, though, right? I think that was... Um, you, you had mentioned family earlier. Um, I think... I lost that dynamic somewhere along the line. I kind of felt like I was an outsider. Um, And again, a lot of this is due to my personality. 
you know. Um, but I think that being an out or feeling like an outsider and then, you know, my album not being what I thought it was going to be or, you know, getting the reception I thought it should get and, you know, um, just not going in a direction musically that I thought I would should be going in. Um, I think that it was a number of things. And I think that um, because I was doing it for so long every day, day in and day out, it's just, you know, it's almost like, you know, you, 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 you're putting a lot of work in, um, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee that it's going to be profitable or show you any type of fruit from that labor. And again, that's nobody's fault. That's the industry. Yeah. So I think that, you know, we had a lot of. It's, got, it's a tough business with a very, yeah, very I mean, low and, and success I think, rate. Right. And I think we assumed that we were going to bypass a lot of the bullshit because we're coming in with busy, but we got to remember this is still a business and it goes back to that individual thing. What are you individually bringing to the table? You know, if we take busy out of this equation, what legs can you stand on as seven sign? You know, um, so there was a lot of hard questions. You know, there was um, less and less communication. I had moved to Florida because I was kind of like, you know, I'm kind of, you know, I was jaded after a while, you know, so I'm like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Move to Florida. As soon as I get there, you know, somebody called me like, yo, little Adrian pass. So that was a, that was a start of the spiral, the seven sign right there. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was it right there. Then Nina pass, you know, then big art pass, rest in peace, big art, Cleveland. Um, it's just, it was just one thing after another. And then it just, you know, um, but all through this time, you know, I'm seeing busy Aaron now and again, I'm talking to him and, you know, we're still, so the thing people don't understand is, although I was not in that rap construct, seven sign rapping and all that, I never not talked to busy on a humanist, on a human level, the friend level, the go bowling level, That's the, right. yo, pick me up at the airport, said I'm gonna be that level. You know, so there's a lot of stuff. So whereas the people thought I was out the loop, nah, I was not really out the loop. I was just kind of laying back because that's the type of dude I am. You know what I'm saying? So um, it's just important to know that we definitely, you know, we definitely gave it our best shot. I just think that, you know, we, I think we took it as far as we could. You know, I know that I did. I don't think that, you know, the only regrets that I have is, you know, not being more vocal at certain points. Um, but, you know, that's with anything. You know, in all my years as a fan and being the host of this show, I've, I've never heard or seen an interview with you. Was, was there any reason for the silence for so many years? And what made you decide that now was the right time to, to come forward and, and talk about all this? Well, you know, it's just, it's, 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 I don't know, man. I, I think, you know, when you, when you live in your own light and you live in your own realness and your own reality, you don't really, it doesn't really, I'm not, I'm far removed from the music. I'm not, no, let me not say that. I'm far removed from trying to be seen and be heard. When I'm seen and I'm heard, I'd like it to be of some substance. You know, I felt like, you know, um, it was just time man, for y'all to hear the truth, you know, for y'all to, you know, I've heard everybody else get a version and get a stories and, and that's their version of the story. And I'm not discrediting that. But I will say that I haven't heard enough of the story of the actual struggle, of the actual times when, you know, um, this shit wasn't working out, you know, of when, you know, we were doubtful that, 
you know, are we just wasting money? You know, are we, you know, are we fucking busy money? What, what, you know, so it was, it was a deeper dynamic involved. And like I said, we didn't have other entities. And I think me speaking just to be talking is corny. You know, if you have questions and y'all have curiosity, you know, um, I would be more than glad to, to answer those. And I, and I, I think I also like the way that you set up your interviews, right? Um, you ask your question and then you allow the person to thoroughly speak and give explanation on that thought. So it's very important for me to be able to not only speak, but also speak in a manner to where people understand me because I'm the last person to do rumors, gossip, or any of that shit. So, um, you know, I just, I just definitely feel like from what I heard over the years, I'm dead. I'm a preacher. You know, oh, yeah. I got <laughs> that's, out the group. That's what I heard. You, you turned to God. You you finished rapping and turned to God, which I you know I knew wasn't true because at, at one point after Seven Sign, you you did Mind Gone Entertainment with Dooley, and you know you released uh, Free for You, Everything for Me. So I knew that you were still doing some work uh, after Seventh Sign, um, and maybe that, that, you know, maybe the other fans just didn't catch on to that, but, uh, what, what, what did it, you know, with the exception of what I just mentioned was, was you doing mind gone entertainment, uh, what, what's it been for you the last, you know, 20 years where it, it hasn't been music? Well, I mean, it has. So, um, I don't know, about 10 years ago, I started doing music videos. So I did, a music video for White, Jules Santana, Jim Jones, Wow, Shirley Low. Um, I'll be out here getting busy, man. You know, um, I think because I think because people are used to the Mr. Majesty thing, you know, um, I think that they probably kind of just put me in that in that loop. Um, but um, I do cinematography, you know, so. Um, you know, I definitely, um, what got, you, what got you into that? What, what made you, you know, transition, uh, from being behind the mic to behind the camera, um, you know, and, and make that, that's a, that's a huge change, but it's awesome that you're still in the industry in a different mm -hmm. way. And you, and you name some right. big names. It's not like you're just doing, you know, local, local nobodies, uh, you know, dips, right. things like that. That's big. How right. did, how did that come about? Well, actually, um, I did a big local video here, um, Northside Riot, and one of the guys in the video was connect had connections with um, Future and Shorty Low. And when I gave him the finished product, um, he loved it so much, he hired me as a personal videographer. Wow. So, um, you know, I was able to obviously finesse and work my hand shout out to white um and definitely um meet those people and do those things now will i say that me being mr majesty did not help get in that door i'd be lying right because um that definitely helps me navigate and it gives me a certain sense of credibility to be around those artists um so um, outside of the music videos, um, you know, I do a lot of writing. Um, so I'm still very active um, when B does his shows. I try to perform as much as I can, if I can, you know, it depends on what his show set is. Um, so, uh, so it's just a situation to where um, oh, have you guys done like live reunions and things like that? Well, the last reunion show we did was, whew, man, it was a while. It was about 10 years. I think that um, I would be willing to do more if the demand was there, right? And because I'm so not in touch with, as you would say, fans or people that are fully engaged or fully want to hear Mr. Majesty album or see a Busy Ball Mr. Majesty tour. I think those things need to be cultivated by the fans. 
Um, and then once you know a, a demand is there, um, we could we could kind of get it done. I think that um, right now we've been in talks for the last year or so um, about the Seven Sign documentary um, and how oh, wow. we'd like to um, to do that to where um, that's big. It's kind of bringing the new generation into what it felt like to be an artist in the 90s. I think that it was a whole different feeling um, than it is now. Yeah, that'd be great if there could be a documentary on that, especially if you could like help with the cinematography of of putting something like that together or would combine, right. you know, your two passions. Uh, I will say for for what it's worth, one of the most um, asked questions by the fans when, when we put them together is, is there a chance for a reunion or future songs with busy and people were really curious about your relationship with busy now, which you told us about, but there, there was a lot of questions about, you know, future songs and, and things like that. So I do think uh, that it's something the fans want to see. The fans always ask about Mo Thug reunions. And uh, mm -hmm. I think you being the strongest affiliate that we identify with busy, that that's something the fans always, you know, also want to know about is yeah. if, there, if there's a chance there. Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the chance is the need, right? So if there's a need and the want that they that they want to, you know, that they want it, I definitely think, um, you know, I could <laughs> hopefully make a few calls, push a few buttons and, and, you know, at least give the fans, you know, an eight song EP. Oh, that'd be um, awesome. Just to hear our voices again. I obviously, um, you know, you know, Q Loco will not be present. Um, but again, it's just it's just what the people want to hear. You know, I'm not sure if, you know, I'm not sure if Busy has artists that he's dealing with, you know, as far as, you know, bringing out. But as far as the original Seven Sign, um, I'll definitely run that by and to see if we can um, definitely put something real That'd be amazing. Real hot together. Um, so I, I don't see where that would be an issue. Um, yeah, it'd be great to even just get a get a song with you guys to to update, you know, us right. as fans and, and to hear that new seven sign. And I will say, I really hope the documentary happens. We talked about how there's new generations of seventh sign artists and affiliates. And the, that new generation really helps keep the uh, old stories alive. Guys like Houdini Black and Skin and Bones have always been great mm -hmm. uh, people to talk to. I also turn to like um, Baby Phil a lot. <laughs> uh, black caesar a lot you know for for seventh sign information so i think that you guys will have a great documentary on your hands especially given how much information isn't out there in comparison to other affiliate groups uh we've covered so much in this interview i i can't thank you enough for sitting down and taking this time before we go is there anything else that we didn't cover that you want to make sure the seventh sign and mr majesty fans know about um we appreciate it, man. You know, I, th I think that, you know, um, this is the first time I've ever talked, ever, you know, um, about any of this. We appreciate it. I think that, um, you know, I don't want to under, you know, I don't want to overstate it, but I definitely do want to say that we even appreciate the fact that, um, there was a set of fans that were willing to embrace our movement, you know, um, and on the backside, apologize, you know, because we weren't able to kind of deliver, um, you know, the goods in mm -hmm. some instances. Um, but we definitely do appreciate the opportunity, um, you know, and definitely, you know, people that, you know, follow me, you know, I definitely, um, don't take it for granted. I meet them at shows. They know my songs. And so I, I definitely, um, I, I'm definitely humbled. You know, I appreciate the whole bone experience, um, getting to know the most uh, guys and um, connecting like that. Um, I was able to live my dream through this, you know. Um, I really don't, the only complaints I have is what's said. You know, it's not so much with them because I control my own destiny. So, 
I appreciate, you know, the opportunity to be heard today, for real. Majesty, I just have, a, this is Jonathan, by the way, I have a nerdy, nerdy question for you. Mm-hmm. I've, always, I've always been fascinated by your verses on the art of war. It seemed like you really like understood the concept behind the album. I almost felt like you drove the concept of the art of war. Like when you said, talked about the rap survival kit, talked about crucial conflict, but I want, I wondered since look into my eyes was on the album and that was originally for Batman, your, your line where you said, have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? I have, mm-hmm. was that like in a reference to look into my eyes, Batman, the Joker, or was that just like just some cool rhyme that you had? No, that was actually um, stolen from Jack Nicholson. Yeah, yeah, um, when he was the Joker yeah. and, and Batman. I'm yeah, saying, were, were you yeah, I'm a, I'm a, yeah, I'm a, um, yeah, I definitely, because um, my friends still make fun of that line. It's, it's hilarious you brought that up. I mean, that's, um, I, and I've heard that line a hundred times, but I'm actually the first person that coined that in a hip hop song. Oh, the way you said it was so cool because yeah. Yeah, at the end mm-hmm. you even have that I have and I'm like man that right. was that was just the construction of it was just mind blowing to me and you, dude your vocabulary was superb like that well, always yeah. stood so, out to me thank you man I, I pride myself on enunciation diction pronunciation and proper word usage I think that you know um Obviously, that's not something that is, you know, um, celebrated or even appreciated. So that the fact that you do appreciate that, I take a lot of time on that. For you to tell me that it's clear, understandable, and precise means a lot. I appreciate that. Oh, a- absolutely. No, no, you stood out on the album as just taking just speaking to a whole new level. So you stood you stood out in a good way. When I say stood out, I don't mean like a sore thumb. I mean, like, right. it's like, wow, this, who is this majesty guy? He's amazing. So yeah, we, it was, it was great. And all your verses on all those albums have always stood with me. I just want to give you props for being an excellent Thank MC, you, excellent yeah. vocab. I, th- I think you can attribute some of that too, to the fact that, you know, your, your roots are in New York and it's very East coast, New York to, uh, you know, to come with that level of emceeing that your right. words are very important. Uh, different different regions, the piece of hip hop that's celebrated is different in each piece and, and word play and, and your, you know, your just your word set is very right. important on the East Coast. So it's been an incredible interview. I, I hope that for you, I hope for the fans that we shed a lot of light on Mr. Majesty's legacy on the seventh sign legacy. And I know that for us, this is our, uh, our finale for this season. Uh, oh, okay. and, and it was wow. incredible that uh, you reached out and that, that you were the, uh, the finale, because this has really been uh, a journey for us. We've done this for three seasons over the course of four years. Uh, we've talked to an amazing list of affiliates and something that is always, I, I would say, confused about our show is um, we're always asked, Hey, when, when are you going to get bone? And, and, you know, bone could come on anytime they wanted, but our, our show is based around bone, but it's not about bone. It's, it's about guys like yourself uh, with the story that hasn't been told for, for 25 years. Uh, so I just want to thank you for taking the time and, and sharing with us. Um, like you said, you're a guy that hasn't shared like that. One other person that I think of is Archie Blaine um, from Too True, who also had never done an interview before us. And I'm just humbled. And I want to thank you so much for taking this much time and and answering all our questions, man. We really appreciate appreciate it, it, man. Y'all stay up, be easy. Um, Yeah, I'll let you know. Um, I'll send you a link to the videos and all of that. So um, God bless, man. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we will be right back with you. The Pone Bone, formerly a Lazy Bones Mighty Mo Thug, has a brand new shirt available exclusively at shop.beyondtheharmony.com. Part of the brand new Skull and Crossroads Society line. Get it while you can. What's 
cracking this black season set aside regime. You listening to Beyond the Harmony. Stay tuned. Air. And we are back. Cecil, John, and I forgot to say it earlier. My man Matt Weaver's with us too. I am fucking pumped, y'all. I am woo. I am oh. pumped. Dude, that was a grand finale. I mean, we do have the live, but what a way to go out. We knew it was going to be phenomenal, and it was even better than we even imagined. Dude. There's so much closure that just occurred, so much info, um, some funny, like the laughing moments to some of the questions were were excellent. We even got to find out about yes, yes, y'all. I, I hope we got every question that the fans had for Majesty I think we got them all. I, I sometimes we leave feeling like we left something on the table, but I think we nailed everything. You got everything that I wanted, and I did. We miss anything? I, I had very few questions on my sheet that didn't get asked. Uh, I had very few. I got I got most of them in. You know what I mean? I'm the fucking Nardwar bone. You know, like I, I loved I loved when he when he <laughs> would laugh at a question like. Uh, like, I can't believe you asked that. It was it was great. And, you know, I had listed it to him, but we had big mysteries that we wanted solved coming into this project. Like I said, Faces of Death, Graveyard Shift, Night Riders, and Seventh Sign is definitely one of those. And on top of Seventh Sign, like Majesty, because of obviously his, his placement has always been so many questions because he was the big, you know, MVP that was pushed from that group. And, uh, incredible and and this is what i'll say anytime that i feel like hey what are we sitting here doing with this show um we have an interview like this where somebody says hey i, I haven't shared my story in 25 years because almost like it, it you, you can't trust it, a platform to do it safely and for us to be that outlet to someone like majesty someone like you know archie um even people like, you know, Jazz, who's done limited interviews, even though she's done a few. It reminds me why we do this. Uh, it reminds me that it's a service that needs to be done. Um, I've been I've been real burned out coming into the end of this season and uh, just kind of counting down the time to when we can breathe. But, man, it, that was a reminder. Be, ha having the the distinct honor of of being the platform and you think of all the bone platforms that have existed, especially since, you know, the internet and we're the fucking platform that majesty shared a story with, because though he, he told us straight out, like you guys, the way you do it, you allow the story to be told. And, and it was a fucking honor, man. That's, and you know, not to internalize it on me, but that's why I'm kind of quiet on a lot of these. There's, there's, we're here to hear their stories. We're not here to, to do all the talking. And that's yeah. why we talk at the beginning of the show and we talk at the end is because, you know, we want to do a little bit of talking, but we don't want to talk. We want to let the people tell their story. And, you know, Majesty gave us I don't even know if he realizes it, but he gave us a concept to drive the future interviews. I'm not going to call it season four, but I'm just going to say he pointed out that while we've done a great job talking to people, we haven't really captured the struggle you know, of those questions of, are we wasting time and money? And um, so I do think we captured some of it, but we've, we've tried to be upbeat and positive and, and he was shine the light. Though. Like, yeah. like think, think about like he, the, the way he positioned it because we're so used to talking to like Mo thugs and Mo thugs came from relativity and fucking Sony and shit like that. Like he is the, the first one that we've talked to that was able to identify like, Hey, this was coming out of Busy's pocket, yeah. and this is my friend. You know, this wasn't coming out of Sony Relativity, and the, and the checks were just being caught, cut wrong. So you you know you felt some type of way. This is coming out of your friend's pocket, and it was just so awesome to hear him give Busy his overwhelming props for even something as simple as busy's busy being a fucking superstar in bone thugs and harmony and he's still running around with all the seven signs spending 10 hours in the studio like you you just don't think of it like that when we think of all these affiliates and and even for a guy like lazy bone uh when you think of these affiliate groups and the fact that that the members of bone literally lead those 
you don't think of that part that just being a member of bone should consume your whole life to the fact that it's overwhelming never mind running seventh sign yeah 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 no i and he as i was saying too at the end and i don't even know if we've ever talked about this because i want to i want to reiterate this i always felt and I'm, i don't know maybe you felt this way but i always felt like majesty understood the art of war more than the bone guys as far as because because i was always a fan of like sun tzu and when bone made the art of war i was like hey man where's the art of war part of the art of war because even on their diss tracks they weren't naming names they had majesty name the names kind of and so he understood it why by he was saying it's the rap survival kit um he's the one that mentioned crucial conflict and then that part about the uh devil in the pale moonlight is a batman reference look into my eyes was the first single off the album i don't i i guess he subconsciously connected it together it's like he he really kind of studied it and embodied it the art of, he almost is the art of war in a way and, and that's blasphemous to say but think about it like if, if what i said bothers anybody think about majesty's verses and especially how different his style is compared to everybody else and think about how he this i always felt this way that it embodied the art of war his his small two verses that were there was like the concept to the album plus the batman reference well i would just point out what he brought up was his age okay so he's very close to busy's age at creeping on a come up and in a lot of ways art of war was his creeping on a come up busy and bone was his easy e uh he had to make sure that he he came with it and i love that he identified oh this is the enemy um i'm riding with bone and, yeah. and he was like i'm gonna fucking you know i'm going at him like bone we don't say no names but mr majesty he he attacks head on and uh yeah you know when when he told his story and i and i was able to because listening to his words i wouldn't have guessed he was that young um yeah. Oh, no, man. no fucking way. Mm -hmm. And that was, yeah. and again, that was his creeping on a come up moment. That was his easy E show and prove moment. Like I need to deliver on the art of war or maybe I won't be on the next one. Thunderstorms when they mourn fallen angels, bro. That line is killer from uh, majesty too. Also, you know, <laughs> even though he's seven signed, did he not embody the acronym of, <laughs> A truly humbly united gathering soul. Oh man, he, he his 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 uh, spirit and his aura and his humble nature. Because think of this: like he he was torn between I'm a I'm a thinker and I listen and I take things in. And you heard him say like I don't want to say certain things were because I was dope. But right. at the same time, it was like, that's what I have to attribute it to. It's the truth. I'm not being arrogant when I say I was dope. The truth is I got certain opportunities because I was nice with it. Right. Yeah. No, I, but you, but I you could tell he was torn even wanting to word it that way. I was, you know, now that I think about it now, remember how I was always curious where Busy got that, like, that real deal hip hop flow from on that Faces of Death album. I won we probably should have found out how far back he went with Busy. Was he around during Faces of Death? Did we ask that? Or he, he he talked about they were yeah they were pretty young when they connect. I don't think it was Faces of Death young, but it sounded like you know it, it was pretty early. Um, because you figure if he was sixteen ish during the Art of War, Busy wasn't much older, right? And you, you know, know the part two that the, well the part also that he was describing was like, Hey, you know, I'm the outsider. I'm also from New York and he's, he's getting that first, he's on the first team and that, you know, the, the potential for animosity or wondering like, why is majesty getting all these opportunities? Um, and the fact that he handled it well. So like, that's an angle that you never even considered till you see it through someone else's shoes. So yeah, and, getting and those spots on art of war is amazing I, I was gonna say not only that but you know at that point there's one mo thug album out with a very very established you know what we could call farm team to the to the major league team and he's coming in as what should be perceived as equal 
a seven sign artist, a Mothug artist, you know, we, we both fall under either lazy and, and them or, or busy, but it, it really sounds like he's like, yo, I gotta, I gotta show and prove. Like, even though I should be looked at equal, like I'm coming in at the, at the bottom and he came in swinging, bro. I mean, everything we said about your initial impression when you heard majesty for the first time was like, I, that was spot on about how I felt like, I'm like, Holy fuck. Who, who is this guy? And, and again, it, it may not have been as impactful if he wasn't on there twice. The him being on there twice was like this guy has something special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, he got the whole track on Heaven's movie, and he was even, yo, he even was self aware that Mr. Majesty Two <laughs> was a solo track on Heaven's movie. Like mm-hmm. when when he pointed that out, even though we had it in our questions, the fact that that it, it occurred to him and he was self aware of that. To, to mention it that was like one of the highlights to me of the night yeah it was was just to have that and then you know that that it was always just a mind blow to me that he had a soul track on a busy bone solo so Dude, that that tells you how much busy believed in him because like i said you you only had so much time on an album yeah. to fill and he's like i had like a six minute fucking song chewing up six minutes uh busy must have really believed in him to and it's not a, it wasn't a throwaway mixtape. It wasn't busy's third or fourth fucking album. It's his debut. It's his first shot. And he gives majesty a whole track. I mean, that, that tells you what you need to know about the guy. I was so happy to have a, an ending to the recorded part of the season that gave busy so much props because I, you know, we, we cut, we often hear, the conflicting stories with you know past affiliates and and whatever bone member they were um connected to and it was just refreshing to hear an overpouring amount of just love and and uh respect for what busy had done you know for him as an affiliate yeah you know and, and the fact that majesty was was considerate of not just trying to blow busy bones money trying to make every opportunity count not yeah. just waste time like that that those are traits that it's hard to teach in people you know it's something that you're instilled i don't know maybe it was from the new york uh upbringing maybe but like that's some people don't realize that resources are scarce and you know they're not abundant all the time unless you got the machine but i really appreciated that he understood the value of a dollar yeah Matt, I know that you were excited about this interview from the time that you found out we were going to do it. Um, was it everything that you were hoping it would be? I am uh, I'm pretty much speechless, and that's why I haven't even chimed in. I don't even know where to begin. I think, first of all, I mean, it was such an honor to speak to somebody so humble about their craft. That alone set the tone. But on top of that, when he started off about his five-year-old free or slick rick lottie dotty vhs tape i was like oh man yeah i love this. i'm gonna love this guy i just i just know it and to go from that to somewhere in the middle when he laughed when you asked if, if he could finish the verse that we've never heard oh uh, i wanted he, that so bad <laughs> and, you know uh to go from that and then for for me one of the biggest parts is at the end his in his own way he was saying his gift to you two guys was that he was entrusting beyond the harmony with his story and so that spoke very loudly to me because this what you getting mr majesty reached out to beyond the harmony you're right Mm -hmm. so that and what an ending to a season i yeah it was a it was a strong ending and and the fans heard it here i do have a follow-up video coming for notorious thugs but that is how we actually ended up uh speaking was he hit me up saw the notorious thugs video and was like hey i am one of the two mystery guys so if you're listening to the interview and you saw notorious thugs you can erase one of those question marks and know that I have a follow-up video coming very shortly about it. Uh, but that is how we ended up speaking. And it, that just goes to show you beyond the harmony. Like that may not have connected if I wouldn't have done that particular video. Cause he said he's watched, he said that he's heard other interviews, but he didn't reach out until it was like, Hey, I want you to know that that was me. And that's how we ended up building the bridge. And it's crazy too, because when he reached out, his email was put in incorrectly and 
I couldn't make contact back to him from the forum. And I was like, I got to find a way. And I went on the Cecil West voyage and reached out to all the people I could find connected to him. Hey, did you, you discovered that Mr. Majesty's solo album that you found, you sent me a screenshot of it. I was unaware of that. Could you give us the name of that? Yeah. So I, I briefly talked about it. We were coming into the end of the interview and, and I could tell he, he was kind of starting to not be comfortable in his chair and stuff. So I, I didn't want to go on it too much, but uh, a little bit after Seven Sign, uh, he started a company called Mind Gone Entertainment. And it was with his manager at the time named Dooley. And uh, he had released some songs, but he did have a, a mixtape and it was called Free For You, Everything For Me. Um, and, and he released that. Uh, I think he had it on like his MySpace and stuff uh, back then. But it is out there. Uh, I have a very blurry copy of the cover. Uh, that I'll try to post up for everybody as well. But he does have a project out there. I believe you can find a bunch of the tracks on on YouTube. And and uh, there's two versions out there. If you look up the Mr. Majesty songs, there's two versions of what's called Mr. Majesty 3. And I believe one of them is incorrectly titled because on Free For You, Everything For Me, he literally has a song called Mr. Majesty 3. And if you go listen to the Confessions bootleg, there's also a Mr. Majesty 3, and they're very different. And for those of you that don't know, the Confessions bootleg is basically just a Hell's Movie Part fucking 3. It's like the same tracks repackaged, right? I, I, a, a good amount of them. Some of them I, I didn't see on the original Hell's Movie bootleg. And then there was like a double disc Heaven's Movie bootleg later on. Um, I thought it was great that he knew about it and, and he actually like, liked that it <laughs> kept his legacy alive. I thought that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. No, that, I, you know, people that don't like hell's movie, how, how much fun has it been even before beyond the harmony to always just know about hell's movie? Like I've always loved that, but also another thing, the closure, you know, I'm always out for that closure to find out that there was no Mr. Majesty one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> from mr majesty like <laughs> we didn't hear from a third party or somebody that was around we we got to find out from mr majesty that there's no mr majesty part one and like you don't understand i've been trying to find <laughs> i've been wondering if if like a different song was renamed like it originally was called mr majesty and then it got changed into a different name kind of like i always thought the seven sign mixtape was the seven sign mixtape, but it's not. It's the Bone Collector Volume One. I just found that out this week. I always saw the Bone Collector Volume Two, and I always wondered where the heck is Part One. I must be missing something. And it turns out that it's the album that I always thought was the seven sign mixtape, but it's not. It's the Bone Collector Volume One. Uh, so it was nice to find that out, and it was nice to find out that there is no Mister Majesty. How did you do? You did you feel relief and closure, or how did that make you feel? It was some closure. I was also hoping that there was a Mr. Majesty one and there, there was a, a big story with it and, and all that. Uh, but it was interesting to hear that, that there wasn't. And I hope that he reaches out to me at some point and goes, Hey, I remember. Yes, yes. Y'all. And he re he records oh, me that man. verse. Dude, um, hey, hey. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let that go. I put him on the spot, but you know, now that I have the interview out of the way, I'm, I'm not gonna let that go. If, if he remembers that and he wants that to be a beyond the harmony exclusive, we'll, we'll put that on. Oh, man, as a, as oh, a, the he day he gay. gives it to me, the, the, the day he gives it to me, it'll go out. Oh, I mean, I'm saying even if he wants to reperform it, like it doesn't even have to be the original. Yeah. He could just redo it. Yeah. Um, I just want to know the verse. I'm sure he doesn't have. Oh, my God. Could you imagine if he had it? Um, but oh, that that's another part, too, that I mean, I don't know if if I'm not saying what Majesty said here is the gospel. But when we asked about the cut songs, he, he the fact that he said that they thought the album was too long. So they trimmed the songs down. I actually feel if that's the if that's actually the case. I feel better about it than it just being like, uh, like some kind of problem or whatever the heck rumors were around. If they just did it out of a courtesy, I, in a way I feel better. Like I don't feel bad about it anymore, but mm -hmm. I also think like, man, I, 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 I also, the rest of the song. I also like that he didn't have the definitive answer on that because it still leaves a little bit of mystery. Mm. And uh, ho hopefully we, we can put closure to that finally at, at some point in the future. Um, 
I'm still out for the answer on what happens on the rest of marching on Washington. Yeah. Like, I just want to know what happens. Like, for instance, I finally got to find out about the end of waiting for never, which that was probably my number one unclosed chapter. And I finally got to hear the rest. And I want to make sure when we did that off season thing, I, I said, I wasn't satisfied. I love the new waiting for never now better than the old one. I, I, I know how you work. I know how you yeah, work, buddy. It just takes a while. In fact, I like the new one so much now that I, I can't even hear the old one. So it's, 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 it's made a change on me not to get into crazy bone, but that album is really engineered. Well, uh, but yeah, I, I st- I'm still on the hunt to find out the story for Marching on Washington. Not, not so much what happened to the song, but just what else happens in the song. It's like a movie that we got to see scene one and we don't know about act two and act three. Closure has been the theme for the evening. Uh, closure on what we needed to know about Majesty. Closure on what we needed to know about Seventh Sign. And closure on season three three of beyond the harmony it's been a successful season next week we hope you guys join us for our special live episode it is march 4th it'll be 7 p.m eastern time we hope everybody joins us in the chat room for this grand finale it's something that i've been working on we know how much you guys love the live experience and i've been working very hard to make sure it's the best live experience possible uh if you want to partake in that you want to make sure that you have zoom on your computer or zoom on your phone and i'll be posting up the meeting id to uh, to join that shortly i'm really excited to be able to talk to the fans uh now that we have eight weeks of of episodes and the only thing we've had really is comments and facebook and you know they've had eight weeks to enjoy and uh take in this incredible incredible season and uh, i'm really excited to talk to everybody next week about what we've done the last two months Same here. Same here. And I think the culture of Beyond the Harmony has grown, uh, not just with us, but with the fans. The narrative has grown. The storyline has grown. The network has grown. The affiliates have grown. So it's it's been a a fruitful harvest and it's been mutually beneficial for everybody. Yeah, everybody. And usually when a season ends, you kind of go on a Beyond the Harmony drought uh, as listeners where you know, we, we sporadically put things out, but I think that season three helped us make the connections. And not only that, but, you know, this is a show and prove situation. So even though as listeners, we were doing what you wanted, uh, there's just, just the way majesty talked about how, you know, you had to show and prove, uh, to, to bone. I think that finally after her, three seasons we're doing that you heard what he he said uh busy had to say about us which is something that you know we've also heard from blaze um you know so it's great to hear that we we are finally showing and proving i i think that it was like hey we're we're gonna wait this out to see if this is just some fucking fad like how down are you guys really and i think that the the blood, sweat, and tears that have gone into three seasons of Beyond the Harmony, four years of fucking content is is being seen. I think that we we did it with this one. Yeah. Yeah, we've done the trilogy, and now we kind of evolve into when... It's the dynasty, movies, baby. It's a dynasty. It's a dynasty. And I think now it's going to be like how movies stopped having numbers. Like it was Halloween part one, two, three, four, five. And then it became like Halloween resurrection, Halloween H2O. And they just had like titles. There weren't numbers anymore. So perhaps that's where we go. Perhaps there's a season four. We don't know what the future has. I don't know, man. I don't know. I just, I know I feel victorious in this moment. Um, I I truly, I, I couldn't think of a better way to end it than the way we just than the way we just did it, man. I really yeah. couldn't. No, it's a to... perfect end to a perfect season. I mean, I feel so satisfied with not only Majesty. I, you guys know I was pumped about tonight, but everything that season three accomplished is personified in just this one episode. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. It was a good one. Everybody next week too with the live. I think the yeah. live is going to be like the fi- like the icing on the already perfect birthday cake. Yeah, you don't want to miss that live. I'm going to be spending all week 
making sure that the live experience is the best one that we've had yet. You guys know when I stepped the game up, I step it up big. We stepped it up huge for season three. We want to thank everybody who has stuck with us, rocked with us. We have dropped content on you seven days a week for the last like eight weeks, and it has been phenomenal. Uh, we will check you guys out on the live for the last time for this season. My name is Cecil West, a.k.a. Mr. Thursday Night, rocking with the one and only. Saying it as articulately as possible in honor of Mr. Majesty, my name is Jonathan Lippy. And if John's the right hand man, my left hand man. Lottie Dottie, I like to party. I am Matthew Weaver. And for the last time this season, Phoenix Rising, take us home. Beyond the